Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. Last week on this platform, I posed a very simple question to you guys. Let me post the same question once again. Assuming we go to the polls in 2027 and William Ruto is defeated in quotes in a free and fair contest, do you think William Ruto will accept defeat? Let me reframe the question. Do you think William Ruto can hand over power in case he's defeated in 2027? I'm asking that question because William Ruto is already consolidating power. Yesterday, there was a story on uh, the Daily Nation. The story said something like this. Justin Muturi under siege. Let me just read for you part of that uh, story because it's going to form the basis of this analysis because William Ruto is clearly out to clip the wings of Justin Muturi. This is what the paper reported that the new national administration laws amendment bill 2023 currently before the National Assembly has once again lifted the lead on subtle power struggles at the state law office. The nation has learned of attempt to clip the influence of Attorney General Justin Muturi with reports indicating that some of government-sponsored bills do not pass through his input. You know, Justin Muturi is the Attorney General, the legal advisor of the government, which means any bill should actually pass through him. And he's saying, the paper proceeds, that a proposal to take away his role as the custodian of public seal is contained in the new bill, with sources said was prepared without his input as the chief legal advisor. You know, there's normally that public seal. And that's basically the government. They now want to take that from Justin Muturi and hand over to the chief, I mean, the head of the public service, who is uh, Felix Kosgi. It says, it, it proceeds, the bill tabled in the House by National Assembly Majority Leader Kimani Ishungwa seeks to transfer the mandate to the head of public service, currently held by Felix Koski. <laughs> Let me just quote this. The head of the public service shall be the chief of staff to the president, be the administrative head of the executive office of the president, and be the custodian of the public seal and any other instrument of state that are not in the custody of any other person. <laughs> Muturi is also involved in a power tussle with the Solicitor General Shadrach Mose, as well as the Public Service Commission. I don't want to get into those. On this channel, what we do is that we analyze politics. So I'm going to focus on the political aspect of the move by William Ruto to clip the wings of Justin Muturi. And the details which I'm going to share with you guys are actually going to shock you. But before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. Who is Justin Muturi? And how was Justin Muturi appointed as the Attorney General. For us to understand who Justin Muture is and how he was appointed as the Attorney General, then we need to go back into history. Justin Muture was one of the former President Uru Kenyatta's close allies. As a matter of fact, Justin Muture was with Uru Kenyatta in Kanu. And if you go to the history of this republic, in 2002, Uru Kenyatta contested for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya, 
with the support of the former president Daniel Toroti Jaragmon. He lost in that election to Mwai Kibaki. Then towards 2005, there was mass exodus from Kanu to Odiyambati. William Ruto led a team of Kanu members to Odiyambati. Uhuru Kenyatta remained in Kanu. He remained in Kanu with Justin Muturi. As a matter of fact, Uhuru Kenyatta remained in Kanu as the chair person of Kanu. Justin Muturi was the organizing secretary and also the minority whip in the National Assembly. As fate would have it, Kenyans went to the polls in 2007. Kibaki retained the seat. In 2013, Uhuru Kenyatta became the president of the Republic of Kenya. What happened was that after that election, and because of the closeness between Uhuru Kenyatta and Justin Muturi, Uhuru Kenyatta ensured just that Justin Muturi became the speaker of the National Assembly. Again, Uhuru Kenyatta was re-elected in 2017. He still stuck again with his friend Justin Muturi as the speaker of the National Assembly. Then you all remember we had the handshake which took place in March 2018. That handshake changed the politics of this country completely. William Ruto, who was Uru Kenyatta's deputy, started falling out with the president. And it was expected that as much as many people were leaving Uhuru Kenyatta, Justin Muturi was expected to stick with Uhuru Kenyatta. But something happened which most people did not take note of. During the National Prayer Breakfast meeting in 2021, something happened there. The bodyguard of Uru Kenyatta actually blocked the hand of Justin Muturi from touching Uru Kenyatta. You know, it was a presidential function. So there was the Speaker of the National Assembly seated next to Uru Kenyatta, then there was Uru Kenyatta and the rest. Then Muturi, they, I think someone was praying, so they were just starting up. And I think Muturi tried to raise his hand like this, and then the bodyguard pushed it. This is a man who all these bodyguards knew for, for a long time that was a close associate of Uhuru Kenyatta. For me, that's the moment I knew there was a problem between Uhuru Kenyatta and Justin Muturi. Because in politics, nothing just happened out of mere coincidence. Watch that particular incident for those who missed it. So Justin Muturi then fell out with Uru Kenyatta. As fate would have it, Justin Muturi became the first major defector from Jubilee Party to UDA Party. Ikura Yataretisa is a vote to end impunity in Kenya. It is a vote for economic emancipation of our republic. It is also a vote to end slave owner mentality in leadership, in political leadership in this country. To us, Nasema Ivi kwa sababu, atunge taka wakati mwingine ule katika uongozi wa nchi yetu kuhuwa na viongozi ambao wanafikiria wala ambao wanafanya kazi nao ni watumwa wao. Muko tulikuwa pamoja, tulikuchagua rais wakiwa pamoja na William Ruto, sio Ruto aende akawe, akawe mtumwa wake. Ni yawe msaindizi wake. Sisi wengine wote tulikuwa tunawasaindia. Lakini wale wengine pale, wanafikiria sisi ni watumwa wao. We are not. And we are going to show you on 9th of August that this is the defining moment when Kenyans will say enough is Kenyans were shocked. As a matter of fact, there are Kenyans who still believe up to now that Uhuru Kenyatta played Raila Odinga just on the account that his close ally, 
Justin Muturi went with Ruto. So after the election, Justin Muturi was appointed as the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya. But William Ruto is now keen on clipping the wings of Justin Muturi. Why do you think William Ruto wants to clip the wings of Justin Muturi? That's exactly what I want us to do in this analysis. So in case you are watching the channel for the first time, please don't hesitate. I know many of you guys normally get the notification, you watch the clips, but you are not subscribed. Please subscribe because I know whatever I'm about to tell you, you cannot find in any other place. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have some popcorns, grab them because this is going to be very interesting. So for me, it has not come as a surprise that William Ruto is trying to clip the wings of Justin Muturi. For those who follow the politics of this country, sometimes back, I think, one or two months ago, when the government decided to increase the cost of IDs, you know, marriage certificates, and the rest, a, a Kenya Gazette notice was published. Then on the day William Ruto was addressing the nation, the journalists were just asking randomly leaders some questions. Then this journalist arrived on the feet of Justin Muturi. Then he interviewed Justin Muturi. And then he asked Justin Muturi the question about that particular Gazette notice. And the answer that Justin Muturi gave pointed out to someone who is not in control of the ministry. So listen in to Justin Muturi. Perhaps, perhaps uh, being the chief legal advisor of government, uh, a lot of Kenyans today have been all over complaining about now, uh, you know, uh, uh, a marriage certificate being more, much expensive than dowry itself in terms of the new charges. What will you take on that as the uh, country's uh, legal chief advisor? Mm, you know, it, it is, that's not my that's not my my line. Eh? But I, I can say that um, when I saw the, the those changes uh, last evening. Last night, actually, I was also surprised that um, the, the, the rates at which uh, they were being uh, increased. But I think uh, a lot of uh, consultation is happening. So I just want to tell Kenyans um, what they have said through social media, through various other medium, has been hard. And uh, without having to say much, uh, let them uh, let them have faith. Thank you. It is being hard. Thank you. Yes. So at that point, it was clear that Justin Muturi was just Justin Muturi on paper. He did not have control over the docket which he was actually supposed to have control over. So the question is, why would William Ruto try to clip the wings of Justin Muturi? Number one, William Ruto is a schemer. William Ruto wants to control the system. How do you control the system? You control the system by having your people all over. Is, is Justin Muturi William Ruto's person? I don't think so. Justin Muturi supported Ruto for his own political interest. William Ruto appointed Justin Muturi to serve as the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya to serve his own political interest. But Justin Muturi's friend still remains Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. And just like I keep on telling you every day, that in politics we have only two constants, the interest and the betrayal. So Muturi betrayed Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. But William Ruto is keen on controlling the system, which means he must have someone who he can believe in, someone he can trust, Someone who cannot wake up one day and start calling for a press conference against him. Justin Muturi cannot serve that interest for William Ruto. Felix Kosgi can actually serve that particular interest. And that's why Ruto is transferring some of these functions to his man, Felix Kosgi. Number two, I also tend to think that because it, it has now come out that... Uh, Justin Muturi is being uh, undermined. <clears throat> there are certain things which are going to the to the printer, national printer, without even his knowledge. William Ruto is planning really to bypassing. You know, by law, there are certain things that cannot just go 
through without the attorney general. Someone can actually take the government to court. So for William Ruto to be able to bypass Muturi, he must come up with these laws, these proposals. And, you know, William Ruto has his team members, someone like uh, Kimani Ishungwa. So he's, pu he's pushing for these changes through Kimani Ishungwa because he wants to bypass the Attorney General. You know, the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya knows a lot about the government. So William Ruto would not want many people to know a lot about the government. So he wants to bypass Justin Muturi. Number three, Muturi is also being punished for his close associates. Number three, Justin Muturi is also being punished because of his past association with Uhuru Mugekinyat. You can't convince anybody. It's going to be very difficult to convince anybody that Justin Muturi fell out with Uhuru Kenyat. I'm saying this because even as yesterday, another friend of mine was posting, I mean, sent me a, some WhatsApp message. He asked me to talk about the fact that there was some trending news that uh, that there was some trending news that um uh, Raila was played by Huru Kenyatta. So it's because of things like this ones. So he's being punished. And lastly, post-2027 politics. I want to repeat, and I still maintain, that William Ruto is too young to retire. William Ruto is not going to leave office. William Ruto is going to serve his term. First term, second term. Then William Ruto is going to be somewhere around the prime minister office that's why the the proposals in the bbi to create the office of the prime minister should be monitored very closely because i don't think william ruto would be keen to create that office for someone else because that office holder will not have term limit as long as you have a party and as long as that party will be able to produce members of parliament, as long as that party can go to parliament and vote for you, the fact is William Ruto wants to continue serving the Republic of Kenya post-2027 as a prime minister. Remember, that was also one of the biggest worries when Uhuru Kenyatta was serving. There were people who believe that Uhuru wanted to become the prime minister of the Republic of Kenya. I don't know what to think. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.